Hello, and welcome to this introduction to TDOT, explained by Akala. Popular product categories in crypto often have lots of competition, which often results in several versions of the same asset floating around the ecosystem. The DOT liquid staking market is no exception, as there's LDOT on Akala, ST.DOT on Moonbeam, SDOT on Parallel, and VDOT on Bifrost. And at the end of the day, all of these different versions represent the same thing, which are staked DOT tokens. Now, while Liquid Stake DOT provides the user with increased utility, all of these competing versions also present some problems. First and foremost, liquidity is highly fragmented and siloed within the specific parachain. And secondly, chains often have to compete for the same DOT liquidity. Well, what is TDOT then? TDOT is a synthetic DOT asset which serves to standardize the different DOT versions, also known as derivatives, across the individual parachains for increased usability, yield, and efficiency of liquidity. It does this by being backed by individual liquidity pools of native DOT and DOT derivatives, such as LDOT, allowing for a highly stable peg value against native DOT. Now that sounds great, but how does it actually work? Let's break it down. TDOT is first minted by providing both a DOT and a DOT derivative into a dedicated liquidity pool. For example, on Akala, you can currently contribute DOT and liquid stake DOT or LDOT into the Tapio pool where you will receive TDOT in return. These pools can then be easily deployed across multiple parachains, allowing full interoperability in the Polkadot ecosystem. And, as the TDOT Minter function is native to Akala, when users contribute to asset pools on alternative chains, that liquidity is transferred to the Akala network via XEM, where TDOT is then sent back respectively. Now, there are a few benefits to TDOT's existence, and first and foremost is that it serves as a stable peg against DOT, allowing you to always swap back to DOT or LDOT. It does this by maintaining a specific ratio of the underlying assets, which is dynamically adjusted by Tapio itself. Very simply, if the proportion of DOT to LDOT starts skewing a certain direction, the discount or slippage will be altered in real time to sway demand towards one of the assets, affecting their share of the pool, allowing for the ability to purchase tokens cheaply or open up arbitrage opportunities. The sensitivity to which this occurs is dynamically tweaked by the Tapio protocol, however, will be subject to community governance down the road. This robustness can then be taken advantage of by being able to facilitate cross-parachain swaps thanks to XEM and the inherent cross-chain nature of TDOT. Secondly, as different parachains introduce new staking solutions and reward programs, they may also create a novel method of yield accrual, such as how LDOT's rewards are realized within LDOT itself. Tapio is standardizing this entire process so users do not have to figure out which staking option to choose and instead are able to just adopt TDOT and have a simple and single place to claim the rewards of the underlying assets. As a result of this, TDOT can seamlessly be integrated into DeFi applications such as for collateral, whether it be to mint AUSD or for leveraged margin trades, or simply borrow against in a money market which will indeed be possible with the release of Pike Finance, which is being built by both Akala and Tapio. TDOT also has the ability to not only be sustainable with its yield, but also be very competitive when it comes to what rewards it can offer users. The first aspect that generates yield is of course the LDOT component of TDOT, which is able to contribute to the overall reward from staking and serves as a way for users to compound their liquid staking strategy. Secondly, being that TDOT's foremost utility is that it facilitates swaps between DOT and LDOT, the fees that are being generated are wholly paid back to the liquidity providers, thus increasing the overall yield. 
As a result, with just these two sources of income, the overall pool is very sustainable and isn't reliant on minting tokens in an inflationary fashion, which is often the go-to method of bootstrapping these sorts of programs. Finally, while not currently live, TDOT will also reward users in the Tapio token to further bolster the yield opportunities and make it more and more attractive as time goes on. Finally, TDOT is a universally accepted and usable synthetic DOT, so that if you're say an application builder, whether it's on Akala or another parachain, you're able to adopt a consistent synthetic asset that works cross-chain, rather than integrating with the multiple different version of DOT derivatives individually. So no matter if you're an incumbent category leader, or an up-and-coming protocol, you could just adopt the TDOT standard and forego having to create your own assets and infrastructure. Continuing from this, another benefit would be that with the use of XCM, TDOT will be able to be transferred to various parachains, enabling them to attain the usability of TDOT without having to sacrifice their own on-chain TVL for it to function. In summary, TDOT bundles all the different formats of staked or crowd loan DOT into a single standard that can be utilized across multiple parachains in the Polkadot ecosystem. As we encroach on an increasingly multi-chain future, synthetic assets like TDOT will become more and more valuable to facilitate cross-chain interactions and functionality, and it's great to have its home at the Akala network. That just about wraps up this brief introduction to the TDOT product. If you have any questions, feel free to explore both the Akala and Tapio Discord, and any of our team members or ambassadors will be more than happy to help. Thanks.